I'm George Putnam. Thank you for joining Sky News for continuing coverage of these historic events. And I'm Bob Friend in London. George, this has certainly been a day when the world stood still. All of us overall in the presence of visitors from another star system. Visitors who have yet to break the silence and tell us their intentions. Showing a good neighborly spirit, world leaders have just given the green light to Operation Welcome Wagon. Science correspondent Monica Soloway is standing by at Andrews Air Force Base in Washington with the details. Monica, we can see thousands of spectators have already gathered for this historic event. They seem very optimistic, full of anticipation. But what's the mood out there on the top? General Van Horn and his men have been working under crisis conditions, scrambling to get the equipment they need to make this mission possible. Now, in light of our apparent inability to communicate with the visitors, Pentagon officials have retrofit the Skylift helicopter with a type of visual communications device, which they hope will be the first step in communicating with the alien craft. Now, this is not a military aircraft. It comes from the U.S. Forest Service, and it normally carries tons of water to fire situations. But as you can see from this tape made earlier today, it has been loaded up with a powerful generator and refitted with these enormous light panels that are attached to the hull and onto the sides. Monica, what are those other helicopters? Well, those escorts are called Huey's, Bob, and Andrews maintains a couple of them for training missions, but they don't normally see active duty anymore. Their use here on Welcome Wagon is almost ceremonial. They're really treating this as an ambassador's mission, and the escorts lend importance to the proceedings without any military threat. You are watching live coverage of Operation Welcome Wagon the first physical attempt at communicating with the alien visitors. That faint buzzing you hear is from Andrews Flight Operations Channel. George, that's right. Now, normally these channels are encrypted and scrambled, but President Whitmore has granted unrestricted access to media outlets all over the world. After all, this is hardly a domestic issue. Any moment now, we should hear the voice of Pilot Commander Al Reeves announcing that he is in position to begin his approach. Now, we don't know the names of the other crew members, all regular staff here at Andrews. The only person on board Skylift whose name we do know is that of Bill Fay, and he is from the SETI Institute. He will be the person operating the light display, and that light display Hello, is... Hello, base. This is Echo 1. We are approaching start position. Over. Roger that, Echo 1. You are go to commence sequence when ready. Over. Uh, copy that, base. The professor will be breaking the ice in no time. Over. Copy that, Echo 1. Start speed. A brief moment of levity from Commander Reeves, a welcome attempt at diffusing some of the tension everyone must be feeling right now. Now, they have been given the go-ahead for their initial approach, and as previously agreed, there will be no more radio communications until this message has cycled at least eight times. Now, it's a little hard to see here from the ground, but this night vision view is showing us the mission in progress. Any second now, you should see the Skylift helicopter turn on. There they are, 64 powerful lights on either side of the Skylift helicopter have just begun to flash humanity's first visual message to our visitors. You can almost see the questions on every face in the crowd. Are you friendly? Have you come in peace? Friend or foe, we watch and wait, hoping for a sign, any sign at all. Bob, the message is beginning its third cycle now. It is a simple message comprised of mathematical concepts converted into binary form. Things such as the value of pi, the first 10 prime numbers, and Einstein's E equals MC squared. Building blocks that any spacefaring civilization should recognize the fate of our world could hang on this universal language of mathematics. Why binary, Monica? Well, quite simply, it is the simplest and quickest language to teach and to learn, independent of sound and cultural and human characteristics. Think of it as sort of an Esperanto for the galaxy, if you will. 